this video, I am going to take you step by step through the process that I use to design these blinds and to make them and install them. Welcome to Clarity Off Grid. We're Matt and Christina, and we live in our off-grid home in the mountains of Colorado. We've decided to retire early and get out and see the world now while we can still enjoy it. Matt built out a Ram Promaster van into a comfy home on wheels, and we've been traveling with our two dogs, Jesse and Lily Bell. Join us as we explore this beautiful country and beyond. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so that you get notified when we upload new videos. This is gonna be a little bit different than a lot of the videos you guys have seen from us, but we had a lot of comments and we had some requests for a little bit more detail on how we made the blinds for our van. And after traveling in our van for over a year, we made some decisions about the blinds and the way we wanted them to work. The first set of blinds that I made for the van were like this, and these are specifically for the bunk windows. And all I did was use Easy Cool, and I had magnets running across the edge here. And then we used a stick-on magnet that framed around each one of the windows. Now the reason we had to do this is because the windows that we installed didn't have any kind of magnetic or metal parts from there, all aluminum. So nothing would stick directly to the window. So we had to make a blind or a covering that would adhere to the framing around the window. That seemed to be a pretty good idea. But after using the blind for a period of time, the self-sticking magnets that were around the window frame begin to pull off. Matt tried putting in some little screws to hold them, but that didn't work over time. They just kept pulling off of the, the wood. It just, the magnet was too strong for the sticky. So we took those off and we went to the hardware store and we bought some metal strips that were a half inch wide Matt painted them black to match the rest of the details, and then we screwed those around the window frames. But then what happened is with this blind, this is a magnet and it was used to sticking to another magnet, and with the fabric over it, the magnet in this um, blind was not strong enough to stick to the metal that we had put around the window as a new window frame. The second thing that we discovered was if these are really nice, easy blinds to just stick up on the window, but when you're not using them, which most of the time we're not, we like to have that light in the van, we had to store them somewhere. And with the fabric, they don't really roll up very well, especially with the magnets on them. We found the best place to store them was in the overhead compartment above the cab. And we store a lot of stuff under there. And so these ended up being at the bottom. And so every time we needed them, we had to dig them out. You know, not a big deal. But when you're living in a very small space, especially a short van like ours, storage is premium. So we realized we really did need a new strategy for the blinds that we use in the bunk area. So what we decided we wanted to go for was a set of blinds that we could fold up and store in place. So we didn't have to store them anywhere else in the van. We could just roll them up or fold them up and tie them and they would be secure in place. And then when we needed them, we just and Velcro them and pull them down and they stick to the framing around the van. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by showing you some of the tools that I'm using to make these blinds and that you might wanna gather up. Um, the first of which is my notes. Um, I took a lot of measurements and I sketched it out and I did a lot of figuring before I came up with the overall design. And so um, just have your numbers close by. If you do it in your head, you're smarter than I am. And the next thing you wanna have, um, besides your typical sewing things like um, your pins and scissors, one of the best things I've found to use for projects like this is a rotary cutter. And I have a quilting board 
with um, lines and also a straight edge. And this really has saved my bacon making um, blinds and these kinds of projects. The other thing that was really useful is this Velcro that I found. It's super soft. And originally I was gonna make the straps out of fabric and then sew uh, Velcro onto the straps. But when I found this Velcro, it's really soft and it's strong. And so I'm just using this as the straps. And so that saved me a bunch of time. The other thing I use is these little magnets. They're kind of encased in vinyl and you can sew through them. And uh, that just happens to be what I have and what I'm using for this project. I think there's a lot of different magnet options for you. So I'm basing everything on these magnets. Um, they sew on really well and they're super strong. So that's what we're using for this project. And then, um, you know, a nice measuring tool that really helps. And I found that if you can get a fabric marker, um, this is my old pencil from back in the 80s. <laughs> and it works really well to mark those stitching lines onto the blinds before you have to stitch in an open field like that. Super helpful. Then um, you'll also need uh, Easy Cool. We're using Easy Cool and we're cutting this into strips and sliding it into the panels. And um, so that's just the material we're using because we have it. The other thing you will need is when we install the finished, the almost finished blind onto that wood trim, we're using a um, heavy duty stapler and a hammer. So pretty basic tools. Obviously you're gonna need a sewing machine. I have an old sewing machine back from 1990 and it's a workhorse. It's the perfect machine. You don't need anything fancy. The other tools that come in handy for any sewing job and particularly this one is a good steam iron and an ironing board. So here is the blind that I have uninstalled but completely finished and ready to install and this is for the bigger bunk window. So it's deeper and it's just a little bit longer than the blind that I'm going to be making and showing you all the steps. One of the first things you want to figure out is this mounting board and what size it's going to be because it's going to determine um, how big your fabric is going to be. So in the case of this blind, this is going to be mounted underneath cabinets that are pretty deep or wide and they stick out. So we could make this any size we wanted. Uh, we're making this three and a half inches wide and it's three quarters inch thick. So as you can see, it's that what determines the width of the panels so that they stack nice and tight. On the blind that we're making this time, it's mounted in a different way and it all depends on the framing and how you framed out your windows. In this case, we only have three inches, so we have to make this top piece three inches and then that determines the width of the panels for this next one. So in this one, they were all three and a half and the one I'm going to show you, they're going to be three inches. So you want to have that figured out. And then you want to spend some time figuring out exactly how big you need to make the panel. So you want to, depending on how you're mounting it, depending on if you're going to have magnets that cinch it down, you don't have to. And that would certainly simplify the project. We did want those because we want to like seal it up nice and tight. And in this case, I'm even gonna put magnets across the bottom because then that will suck that in to the bottom edge of the, um, of the blind and the window and make a nice, clean, tight seal. So you wanna get all that figured out ahead of time, figure out what kind of magnets you're gonna use, and then you'll need to figure out some basic information. The most important information you're going to need is the overall width of your fabric so that it goes past the window and can still accommodate your magnets. So the information that I spent some time figuring on was how big I need to cut the fabric. So I know the width of this window to cover the window, to go over those little magnetic strips that we have mounted outside of it and to get the magnets in just the right spot, I wanna cut my fabric 
uh, 38 inches plus I'm using a half inch seam allowance and that just makes the math a whole lot easier. And then um, I want to figure out the height of the fabric. You want to make sure you take into account each one of the panels at, and then the width of your, the thickness of your material because that's got to wrap around it, right? And then you want to account for your seam allowances. So there'll be a seam allowance at the bottom and then a seam allowance at the top. We included this cool little ruffle because I wanted a little feminine touch to the van. If you don't want a ruffle, that simplifies it as well and you can do the same project and just tack it without the ruffle. So you want to figure all of that out before you cut your first piece of fabric. So I have those notes here. I know I need to cut it 38 plus the seam allowances and I know going up from the bottom I'm going to have four panels of three inches plus I need the three quarter inch thickness of the of the trim piece and then three inches because the fabric's going to go all the way over the top of that. And then in addition to that, when I'm working with the height, what I found is I added a couple more inches just for slop and I can cut that off at the top after I've attached the ruffle. Having a little bit of extra fabric up there is okay and if you don't need it, then you can cut it off. But if you run a little bit short, you can't add any on. So that's just one little thing I figured out. Then the fabric that I'm using, um, if you've seen our van builds or any of the blinds that we've made in the past, I'm using shower curtains that match the curtains that go across the back of the van so everything kind of ties together. And you can get big open sheets of fabric that way where you don't have to have seams. So I'm just using a shower curtain and then for the back side of it, the side that will show to the outside, I'm using a um, just a white sheet, a single flat sheet that we purchased at a linen store. And, you know, I'll take a minute to talk about that. We decided to do white because the main concern in our van is reflecting heat out to keep the van cool. We're not necessarily trying to be completely stealth. So if stealth is important to you, you might want to consider using black fabric or blackout fabric and um, that way you won't get any light through. I mean, we'll have to see once these are in and we turn the lights on. I don't think much light is gonna go through, but choose the fabric that works for what your, um, your goals are for your van, whether you wanna be super stealth or you just wanna have it pretty or you wanna reflect that heat and light like we do. One more thing you might wanna do, this is something I did before I tore into my precious fabric and time is I made a little mock-up and I made a little mini blind just to see what it was going to be like you know to put these pieces in and how they would fold and how to work out how to put the straps on them the tie down so I made this little mock-up it really answered a lot of questions and I also um, practiced putting the magnets on and made sure that they would stick really nice in the van and so that was pretty helpful. So make yourself a little mock-up if you just want a little extra confidence as you move forward. It's worth the time. Okay, so for the first piece that I cut is for the ruffle. And as you can see, this shower curtain has a um, real variegated look where it starts off dark brown and then it fades into some um, more pastel -y colors. And so I wanted the ruffle at the top to be the brown, so that was my first cut. And now I have a strip that I can hem and I can ruffle and that will go over the top. I'm gonna set that aside for now and then I'm gonna cut the main piece of shower curtain fabric. Now this is one um, trick that I am going to use is that on one side of the shower curtain it's already got a finished edge. So I'm going to use that edge for the edge where I slide the, um, the easy cool strips into and that saves me an extra step. 
And then when that's done, then I'll just run a little stitch along the edge to close it up. So that'll make it a little bit easier. Okay, so here we have it. I have a piece of the shower uh, curtain fabric cut to the size I need. And then I also have the white sheet that will be the lining and we'll show to the outside and I cut it to the exact same size. You can also see that I used that finished end on the sheet. So I'll match these two sides together and then that will um, make one side of the, the blind and it will already has a finished edge on it. So my next job is to lay out all the locations of the magnets and as you can see, they go on the, the white side on the sheet. And I just chose to place them about halfway, um, halfway up each one of these little panels. And it doesn't have to be exact, but I'll measure it because I like things being tidy. Just another quick pro tip. If you're using something light, some fabric that's really light like the sheet, make sure that you give it a really good ironing and get out all the wrinkles. When I was making the first blind, I started to iron it and my iron, since I've had since I think high school, finally gave up the ghost and stopped working. And so I just did the best I could and then I ended up fighting it the whole time because this fabric just seemed to like change shape. So just give it a really good solid ironing and save yourself some headaches um, along the project. Okay, so we're ready to lay out the magnets. And so that was one of the um, key distances or key numbers that you need to figure out before you start your project um, is the overall width of the blind. I determined was going to be finished. It was gonna be 38 inches. And the distance between the center line of the magnets is 36. So that makes the math super easy. Just need to bring the magnets in, the center line of the magnet in about an inch off of the finished edge. So um, I'm gonna do that now. A couple of notes. If you are using this kind of magnet or really any magnet, make sure that you know which side of the magnet is the strongest. Um, one way to test it is, I know with these magnets, one is stronger than the other. If you go over to your refrigerator or to any board, you can put it up there. Um, this side, it kind of sticks, but uh, not very strongly. And when you put it that way, it really snaps to it. So I know that I need to have more of this flat side is going to be facing up when I sew it on so that it sticks really strong to the metal strips that are on the wall. The other tip I learned is that when placing these magnets, and I learned this from trying to sew them onto Easy Cool, the nice thing about this kind of blind is that you don't have to sew through the easy cool. You're just making a big casing for it. And so that's a real benefit. But even trying to sew this magnet, which is a vinyl and it's pretty slippery, uh, what I've discovered is I've determined that I want this side up. I determine where I want it. And then I lay some tape over it, some clear uh, tape and just tape it right to the fabric and then I can sew around it and it's not going to be sliding all over the place. Okay, so I got all these magnets laid out and taped down onto the fabric. So now I just have the tedious job of just sewing a square around each one of those to uh, sew them to the fabric. So welcome to my editing room, now sewing room. You can see in the back I've used my whiteboard to put all my scratchings and my numbers from the original blind that I made um, previous to this one. Let's get to it.
one of the fun things about this project is just the comic relief of trying to sew with magnets. They stick to each other, they stick to the sewing machine, they stick to my scissors. It's, it's just something to get used to, but it's kind of funny. And the other thing I wanted to mention that I am by no means a professional seamstress. So this may be completely wrong, but when I'm sewing around uh, the edge of something like this, I often use my zipper foot and um, that just really helps me get a really tight edge around there. So try it if you haven't already. So I got all those magnets put on and I peeled the tape off. And now that I've absolutely mauled the fabric, I am going to iron it nice and flat. Okay, so we've got it all ironed and now I've put the right sides together and I am pinned it and I am going to stitch just two sides of this. I'm gonna stitch the bottom seam and I'm gonna stitch one of the side seams. And I'm leaving the seam open where it's finished already with the finished edge of the sheet and the finished edge of the shower curtain because that's the side I wanna keep open to slide the easy cool through. And there's no reason to stitch the top because it's probably gonna get cut shorter anyway. So just two seams and then I'm gonna turn it right side out and iron it. I've stitched the seam across the bottom and across the one side. Now I'm gonna clip this one corner so that it makes a nice uh, clean corner. I'm gonna clip that little triangle right off and then we're gonna flip it right sides out. And then we're gonna take some time to really iron it flat so it has really beautiful clean um, edges. Okay, so there we have it. We now have like a big pillowcase and I'm going to press it and here the magnets are all on the white side. So we're gonna do some ironing work and then I'll get back to you. Well, I wasn't able to finish the whole blind yesterday. Um, so I resumed this morning and the goal today is to get this completely finished. And Matt is making the trim piece for the top and then we're gonna try and get that installed and put in the van for you today. So where I am right now is I've taken the um, lines that I'm gonna stitch across the whole blind and I have pinned them. And I just wanna make a note to kind of help you guys in case you're trying to do this, is that especially when using a light sheet and then using the um, shower curtain fabric, what I have found is that is as I stitched along these lines, then I get a big bubble of fabric. So what I've done is I've done a lot of pinning. I've pinned st the, each of the ends and then pulling it tight, pinned the middle and then keep pinning it so that I can just keep easing the fabric in as, as I stitch it. So if we have any quilters out there or people who have more experience sewing than I do, if you wanna throw some tips down in the comments, I think everybody would really appreciate it if you have a better way of dealing with this, you know, sewing two different types of fabric together so that you get it um, without puckering and uh, getting bubbles in it. So the next step is I'm just gonna stitch all of these lines and then we'll be ready to slide the easy cool strips in. So that went pretty well. Um, I found just holding a little bit of tension on the fabric um, and I was able to, to stitch and not have it um, bubble up too much. Matt's outside cutting the easy cool strips that will slide into these pockets. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the ruffle. Okay, so here's the piece that I cut for the ruffle. I allowed, um, half an inch under and then under again for the hem and then a half inch seam allowance on the top. 
And the only decision I have to make now is how much ruffle do I want? Somewhere I think I read years ago that like you double the length of the piece to get, um, to get a good ruffle. However, I don't want it so roughly it's going to stick out. So on the last one, I did about um, a width plus then a half. And so I'm going to cut it there. And so we'll have just enough ruffle to make it look nice without having it, um, you know, too stiff because it's pretty, pretty short little valance piece there. So I'm going to hem it. And then I'm going to run a loose, a really long stitch across the top where the seam allowance is. And then that'll allow me to pull in the, and gather in the ruffle. Okay, so I have my ruffle. I hemmed the edge and the sides. And then I ran a long stitch along uh, the seam line here. And then I'm just going to lay that seam line where I want my seam on this mark that I have here. I'm going to pin each side and then I'm just going to um, make sure that the ruffle is evenly distributed along this edge. Pretty easy. take one more quick measurement and make sure that we're still got 38. This is kind of puckered a little bit so at least when we pull it out uh, it's roughly 38. It's exactly 38. So we're good to go. So I have the ruffle on and now I'm ready to the last step is to put the straps on. Oh if it's not magnets it's velcro. I want the soft strap. This is the soft fuzzy one. It's really pliable and soft and I want it to run down when the blind is down. I want it to just hang and it'll just be against the window. So I like the idea of having this soft one. And so you want to make sure that the soft side is down. This fuzzy soft side is down and it's going to attach to this section of fabric which is going to be mounted on that trim board. So I'm just going to lay it out for now. And then this one is the sticky side, the bumpy side of the Velcro, and it is going to be put in underneath this, underneath on the underside of the panel because it's going to run down and be hidden underneath the ruffle. So you want to have the bumpy side up and you'll see in a minute why that and so I'm just going to lay that under there. I'll lay it out and then I'll stitch around these. I'm going to put two sets of straps. One um, about here and probably another one right here. And so I'm just going to cut these in half and lay them on here and then I'll stitch those and I'll show you how it works. Okay, we have made it to the moment we've all been waiting for to put these easy cool strips in. And as you can see, I have my straps sewn on. I did a double check to make sure that I had the right sides um, meeting up. So this is the time to fix anything um, in case you just got something turned around or something. So do a double check on it. And I did, looks like everything's good to go. Matt cut me this Easy Cool Strips to be just a little bit shorter than the length of the width of this window. And also these pockets on this particular blind are three inches even. We discovered from doing the other blind that you want to cut your Easy Cool about a quarter of an inch um, smaller than the pocket so that you can easily slide it in. If it's too big, you're going to end up having a lot of friction and you can't get it in there. You also want to have it enough smaller to where when we have all of these in here that they easily fold up. So they need a little bit of slack in there. 
So I'm just, and don't worry too much. If I can see already there's this one little place where my stitching wasn't just perfectly three inches. So you can just take some scissors and trim that side of the easy cool. Um, I think it'll all be okay. There we go. Now let's see if it all works as planned. So this is gonna go over that board. This will be up above the cabinets and then this will fold in under. So it'll fold under there and then this way and then that way, like so. And then that strap got folded in there in my experiment. And then this will wrap over and like so. And you can see we can trim these off just a bit. I left myself a little bit of slack just in case we needed to, um, to adjust a little bit. You can always cut it off, but you can't add it back. Now we're ready to put it on the board and install it in the van. Okay, so now it's time to mount the blind that I've made onto the trim piece that Matt made. And we're gonna use just some simple tools. We're gonna use some heavy duty staples. Matt's got a, what T50. did you call it? T50. Matt's behind the camera right now. <laughs> this is a T50 and a hammer, and that's all we really need. Like that. Make sure these staples are sunk with some masculine brute force. Brute force. All right, so we're going to take these guys out and put them in the van, and we'll show you how that's done. So, trying not to totally tear apart the fabric with the drill bit. Um, I'm using an awl here to poke a hole in the fabric before I drill. And then I actually pulled it up last time and tried to really spread the fabric out so that it catches as little as possible. And then I'm just carefully trying to drill it. <laughs> there we go. So it definitely pulls on the thread. So I just went really slow while it pulls on the thread until it kind of gave way and then just continued down into the board so I can keep drilling. Okay, so we got two holes in there and we'll go put them in. I'm just setting the screws in the screw holes so that they will hold themselves up. And then, remember, the, oh yeah, I guess we need to, we just kind of have to get this in the right spot. Wow, that looks like it really is going to work. You now sound surprised. <laughs> hold it in place. <laughs> Seems like it's perfect. Are the magnets right on the center lines of the Seems uh, like strips? It. Okay. Can't tell. Seems like it, it works. Awesome. That's cute. <laughs> Look at that. 
Okay, so we got both of these blinds installed. They work great so far. And I did do one more step that I didn't film. And that is, you can see that the um, ruffle, when, I, when we first installed it, kind of um, was sticking up. And um, it's not a very big ruffle. It doesn't have a lot of weight. So what I did was I took my glue gun and I just put a little dot of every few inches along here and press that uh, little ruffle down. And so it looks much better now. So I'm gonna wrap up this video for today. I hope this has been inspiring for you. I hope that um, you took this and you can take this and do um, add your own flavor to it. If so, please leave a comment down below and let us know what you've done with this information and any ideas you have that might help other people who are making blinds for their van. And um, it's just a really fun, creative process. And so I look forward to hearing what all of you guys have to say. Make sure that you check out the next video. Hopefully next week we are going to have a full van tour of all of the upgrades that we did to the van after traveling in it for over a year now. So we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.